Another exodus from China occurred after the CCP's 20th National Congress. Shi Shan, the chief editor of the Epoch Times, has stated that since the Chinese Communist Party CCP, took control in 1949, there have been five waves of Chinese fleeing. The first wave was before the 1950s when many individuals sought refuge in Hong Kong due to the CCP's land reforms and the killing of capitalists and counter-revolutionaries. The second wave occurred during the three-year famine, followed by the third during the Cultural Revolution when a large number of Red Guards fled. The fourth wave took place in 1964, and the fifth wave is currently ongoing, reaching its peak after the 20th National Congress of the CCP. According to some mainland media reports, millions of Chinese workers are expected to leave China along with the wave of foreign-owned companies fleeing the country due to CCP policies and severe capital controls. Additionally, the number of searches for the term immigration on social media platforms has increased to hundreds of millions after three years of the pandemic in China, where the economy is sluggish, the unemployment rate is high, and the human rights situation continues to deteriorate. Bloomberg reported that, since the abolition of the COVID-0 policy in December last year, a well-known immigration consulting company has seen a surge in the number of consultation appointments for Chinese people seeking to purchase overseas real estate for immigration. This year alone, the number of consultations on overseas property purchases by Chinese nationals has risen by 55% year-on-year. The South China Morning Post, SCMP, has stated that Southeast Asia, especially Thailand, has become a popular destination for Chinese investment and relocation due to lower geopolitical risks. The affluent primarily immigrate through investment, whereas the impoverished resort to other means, such as illegal immigration through traveling, smuggling, and surrogacy. Chinese illegal immigration is not exclusive to Southeast Asian countries like Thailand. In recent years, there has been a sharp rise in the number of Chinese nationals smuggling themselves into the United States via Latin America, with 1,300 individuals reported in February of this year alone, marking a 900% increase from the previous fiscal year, according to American media reports. These immigrants, who brave the treacherous jungle and pay hefty sums to smugglers, are primarily motivated by the desire for new economic opportunities, political freedom, or freedom of belief. To gain access to the United States, Chinese nationals have reportedly paid criminal gangs between $35,000 and $50,000, putting themselves at significant risk of being robbed or worse during the long and arduous journey. One such individual is a Chinese man surnamed Huang, who spoke with media reporters after reaching the coast of Panama. He cited a lack of hope in China as the primary reason for taking such a perilous journey, stating, who wants to leave their homeland when there are other options? In response to the outflow of Chinese citizens, the CCP has tightened border control and employed the pretext of endangering national security to control dissidents, human rights defenders, and other individuals deemed sensitive. The CCP's fox hunting operation has led to the capture of many individuals who fled abroad, particularly senior officials. Nevertheless, in early March, the Epoch Times reported on the rare escape of a staff member of the former Chinese embassy and consulate in New Zealand. A massive influx of Chinese workers is migrating to nearby countries such as Vietnam, Laos, and Hong Kong. Recently, footage of massive crowds queuing in front of Chinese border crossings has circulated on the internet. These videos depicted a significant outflow of Chinese workers to nearby countries like Vietnam, Laos, and Hong Kong. Videos taken by netizens showed that Yukong New City, the first residential area built for Foxconn employees, is now deserted with empty commercial streets and closed shops. At its peak, nearly 100,000 people lived in Yukong New City, which was a bustling hub of noodle restaurants, supermarkets, KTVs, and esports hotels. However, the recent exodus of foreign companies from China has had a significant impact on the local economy, and now the dormitories for hundreds of thousands of people in Yukong New City have been demolished. On March 19, a video was uploaded on the internet showing a large number of employees at Foxconn's Zhengzhou campus, which once employed 300,000 people, preparing to evacuate with their luggage. 
While many Foxconn employees have had to handle resignation procedures, some have been transferred to other campuses in Jinan, Wuhan, or India. In addition to Zhengzhou Foxconn, Shenzhen Foxconn, and Chengdu Foxconn also reported dismantling production lines and dismissing temporary workers. Some Foxconn employees said that it is said that Foxconn India will expand its recruitment by 200,000 people and Foxconn China will naturally lay off a large number of employees. This trend is not unique to Foxconn, as many foreign companies are also withdrawing from China due to the CCP's policies and strict control of funds. Some mainland netizens said that it seems that they will have to adapt to working in Southeast Asia in the future. The number of illegal Chinese immigrants arrested at the U.S. border has surged ninefold. Recent data from Tencent.com reveals a significant uptick in searches related to immigration on popular Chinese platforms such as WeChat and Baidu. Specifically, in March 2022, searches for immigration to Canada surged by a staggering 2,846% month-on-month. Other popular search terms included Where is it good to go abroad? with a 2,455% increase and How to Immigrate to Malaysia, with a 2,431% increase. According to many experts, the sharp increase in interest is attributed to China's COVID-19 zero policy, which has had a profound impact on the economy and human rights, leading many to seek greater freedoms overseas. Ching Tsuanju, director of the nonprofit Voice of Immigrants, notes that many Chinese citizens have been awakened to the lack of freedom in their country due to the pandemic. Mr. Zheng explains, the CCP's COVID-19 zero policy has seriously hurt ordinary Chinese people. Many people did not care about politics before, but this epidemic has awakened them. They realize that there is no freedom in China. Fu Xiqiu, chairman of the China Aid Association, confirms that his organization now receives assistance requests from Chinese nationals who have recently entered the United States on a weekly basis. He cites three main reasons for the surge in illegal border crossings, deteriorating human rights conditions and religious freedom in China, the relaxation of stricter border policies under President Trump, and the spread of Chinese cross-border posts on social media. Ms. Zhang, a human rights activist who recently fled China, adds that under CCP suppression, citizens have no freedom of speech or living space. Human rights defenders, like her, face even greater persecution than others, making it impossible for her to remain in China. Zhang notes that many people flee to the United States because it is easier for them to earn money and support their families in China from abroad. Amidst visa scrutiny and travel restrictions between the U.S. and China, many ordinary Chinese citizens are resorting to taking one of the world's most dangerous smuggling routes through the Panamanian rainforest to reach the United States. Human rights activist Ms. Zhang highlights the dangers of this route, stating that those who attempt it must endure a treacherous journey, risking their lives for a chance at a better future. From those countries in South America, they walk through the rainforest for nine days and nine nights crossed the ocean, brought children, were dragged in muddy water, fell into the river, drowned, and were bitten to death by poisonous snakes. That is 100% death in China, she explains. Recent data from the Wall Street Journal reveals that in the past three months, at least 3,855 Chinese individuals have made the dangerous journey, a stark increase from 2005 for all of 2022 and 376 between 2010 and 2021. According to immigration data from the Panamanian government, nearly 2,200 Chinese citizens entered Panama through the dense jungle of the Darien Canyon in the first two months of 2023. This number is higher than the total of 2,000 Chinese entering Panama in all of 2022 and a massive increase from the 77 people counted in 2021. As Ecuador exempts Chinese from visas, many have flown there and traveled north. According to an Axios report, Sam, a Chinese father, and his 16-year-old son made the journey north from the south in February, finally crossing the U.S.-Mexico border after traveling through 11 countries, including Thailand, Turkey, Ecuador, Panama, and Guatemala. According to Sam, the surge in the number of Chinese entering the country illegally reflects the continued resistance of the Chinese people to the CCP's strict domestic policies. 
Sam told Axios, this exodus shows the Chinese people's resistance to Xi's retrogressive policies and draconian lockdown measures. It's like a stampede before an earthquake. Jorge Venture, a reporter from News Nation, shared a video on March 20 and tweeted that he has been reporting border news for the past few years, but he has never seen such a large number of Chinese illegally crossing the border into the United States. According to Jorge Venture, the number of arrests of Chinese nationals by U.S. border agencies has surged by more than 900 percent compared to last year. The Chinese internet called this move running to the border of the United States. According to WeChat's public data on February 1, the search volume for the term running to the border has seen a huge surge since 2021, with 550,000 times for content related to the term were searched and reposted by WeChat users. The CCP and the U.S. prompted measures to prevent people from running to the border. With the number of Chinese people being smuggled into the United States from Latin America soaring, Rumors have circulated online that the Chinese Communist Party has started preventing those suspected of running to the border from leaving the country. The CCP's anti-telecom fraud law was implemented on December 1 last year and strictly censored Chinese residents who traveled to eight countries, including Cambodia, Myanmar, and Thailand. According to mainland Chinese people, the police will search for them as long as they book a flight ticket online. Radio Free Asia also quoted sources from human rights defenders in Hunan and Hubei saying that the CCP's border control has significantly improved recently. Mr. Liu, who intended to leave the country from Zhuhai to Macau last week and then transfer to Malaysia, was told that he was on the blacklist of border control when he tried to leave. According to Article 12 of the Exit and Entry Administration Law, he was prohibited from leaving the country. Ms. Seng, a frequent Chinese traveler, recently disclosed that Chinese customs officers have increased their scrutiny of travel documents, often asking a series of questions. For example, if a traveler indicates that they are going to Hong Kong, the officer may ask if they intend to travel elsewhere. If the traveler is flying to another country from Hong Kong, he may be asked for additional documentation and inquire about the purpose of the trip. A screenshot of a social media post made by a Chinese citizen who planned to walk the line from Europe to Ecuador was circulated online. However, the plan was thwarted when the individual was stopped by customs officers in Beijing who had obtained information about the plan from the individual's WeChat records. As a result, Chinese citizens are being advised not to discuss smuggling plans on mainland social media due to the Chinese government's tight monitoring of online activity. Meanwhile, on April 21, U.S. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas announced during a speech that the department will enhance screening and vetting measures to detect Chinese nationals attempting to enter the United States illegally. This announcement comes after the dismantling of a Chinese police outpost in New York City that was targeting Chinese dissidents in the U.S. According to a 2021 analysis by the Migration Policy Institute, MPI, Latin America and Asia are the leading sources of immigration to the U.S., with China ranking third with 2.38 million immigrants. In mid-2022, around 117,000 Chinese citizens sought asylum worldwide, as per UN data, a significant increase from the 15,000 recorded in 2012. However, most migrants at the southern border may be disqualified from seeking asylum under a new policy by the Biden administration that takes effect in May. This policy may have a significant impact on Chinese citizens, who currently have a higher asylum approval rate of around 58 percent compared to the average rate of 10 percent for asylum seekers from the Northern Triangle countries in Central America. Chinese diplomats are imprisoned in an invisible prison. On March 13, the Epoch Times reported on the daring escape of Dong Luobin, a former logistics staff member of the Chinese consulate in Auckland, New Zealand, in May 2018. Dong fled from the confines of the consulate and into the unknown, shedding light on the oppressive conditions that many Chinese consular employees endure. Rhys Ball, a senior lecturer in security studies at New Zealand's Massey University, stated that this was the first known instance of a foreign government official or employee fleeing on New Zealand soil since the Cold War between 1947 and 1991. In an interview with reporter Yi Fan, 
Dong cited his feelings of oppression from his upbringing in the underground Catholic Church, suppression by the government, and a lack of freedom of speech as reasons for his escape. He faced significant pressure after escaping and initially declined media interviews to protect his family. However, now that he is reunited with them, Dong has shared his story, revealing that the consulate controls all aspects of employees' lives, such as confiscating his passport upon departure, denying his freedom by restricting travel and access to local media, and withholding his income until his return to China. Six months after his escape, New Zealand granted him refugee status after concluding that he would face persecution for his religious and political views if he returned to China. This is not the first case of a Chinese consulate employee seeking asylum in a foreign country. In 2005, Chen Yonglin, a former political consul and first secretary of the Chinese consulate general in Sydney, fled the consulate and sought political asylum from the Australian Immigration Service during the commemoration of the June 4 incident. According to Chen, as many librarians have escaped in the past, particularly in major Western countries, Chinese embassies and consulates have employed stringent measures to prevent staff from escaping. These measures reportedly include routine confiscation of passports and surveillance of staff movements. Chen revealed that diplomats are required to be accompanied by at least two individuals when attending foreign affairs activities, and consulate staff typically reside in a concentrated area, participating in organized activities with expenses covered by the consulate. Following Chen's escape, embassies and consulates have reportedly ramped up their defenses, with stricter controls placed on staff movements. Journalist Chershan has described the situation as akin to an invisible prison for Chinese diplomats. Chinese snap up real estate in Thailand and use Thai women as surrogates to get residency. Thailand has recently become a popular destination for Chinese investors looking to transfer their assets and acquire residency. Despite the pandemic, competitive prices and investment yields have driven Chinese investors toward Thai properties especially in Bangkok, Phuket, and Chiang Mai. Chinese buyers have been the largest group of foreign buyers of condo units in Thailand since 2018. Data from Thailand's Real Estate Information Center reveals that Chinese buyers purchased 3,562 units valued at 17.94 billion baht, about $511 million, during the first nine months of 2022, accounting for 49% of units transferred to foreigners. According to Jue IQI, Thailand was a top pick for Chinese property buyers from 2018 to 2021, but in 2022 it slipped to fourth place behind Australia, Canada, and the United States as more investors look to these countries. Other countries that are gaining popularity among Chinese buyers include the UK, Japan, Vietnam, and Malaysia. The Tourism Authority in Thailand is doing its part to promote Chinese tourism by offering 30-day visas on arrival until the end of March. It is expected that this initiative will lead to 300,000 Chinese tourists in the first quarter of 2023 and 5 million for the entire year. Data from Trip.com shows that flight bookings from China to Thailand increased by 67% in February 2023 compared to the previous month. This surge in interest from Chinese investors and tourists is a promising sign for the Thai property market. The Bangkok Post reported that Chinese investors are rushing to purchase real estate in Phuket to cater to tourists from their own country. According to property consultant Frank Thailand, the Phuket property market is experiencing a surge in demand fueled by Chinese property investors and Russian buyers. While Russians are showing interest in purchasing pool villas, Chinese investors are snapping up condos, villas, shop houses, and even durian orchards to rent out to Chinese tourists. For many Chinese, retiring in Thailand is becoming more and more appealing due to the lower cost of living and home prices in comparison to their home country. Shanghai resident Ari Chen, for example, can find a home in downtown Bangkok for around 600,000 yuan instead of spending at least 4 million yuan to live on the outskirts of Shanghai or double that amount for an average unit in the city's urban areas. Additionally, with low interest rates on deposits in China, investing in Thai property offers the potential for a higher yield, which can provide additional funds for retirement.
Moreover, many Chinese people have obtained the right to abode in Thailand by engaging in surrogacy services provided by Thai women, according to Thai immigration officials. Through surrogacy, these individuals can have children born in Thailand and then obtain the right of abode in the country under the guise of raising their children, thereby avoiding restrictions on foreigners holding assets. Despite commercial surrogacy being illegal in Thailand, desperate Chinese nationals are still resorting to these measures. Recently, on April 6, Thai police searched a five-story building in Bangkok's Siloam area and rescued two kidnapped Chinese men while arresting three Burmese and four Chinese individuals. The two Chinese men had been abducted in Kanburi province on March 20 and extorted for 5 million baht, about $150,000. It was discovered that these two men were running an illegal surrogacy business in the building, and their business partners were the Chinese and Burmese gangs involved in the kidnapping. Thai women who provided surrogacy, as well as fake ID cards and passports, were among the partners, along with local Thai nationals who reportedly participated in the illegal surrogacy operation. On April 4, a Thai suspect was charged with illegally allowing foreigners to stay in Thailand, and on the same day, for suspects, including a well-known Thai doctor, surrendered to the police. An investigation also revealed that 80 Thai immigration officials were suspected of colluding with Chinese citizens to illegally issue visas following a drug seizure at a Chinese-owned nightclub in Sathorn District in October 2022, exposing the extent of the illegal immigration issue. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.